Hello, I have the Keychron K4 version two, 96%. This has been featured on Short Circuit uh, before. It's a great keyboard by itself, but uh, it's not quite the keyboard that I wanted. Uh, you see, I was watching this guy right here and he was going through all these keyboards. I was trying to decide which keyboard I wanted to get and he just went ahead and narrowed it down. to tell me I had to pick one of these keyboards to use for the rest of my life, out of this collection, it would probably be either the IQNX F97 or the Keychron Q1. And so let me tell you why. And so I, I decided I didn't really like the other uh, keyboard he was showing. I didn't like the the Keychron version. It was it didn't have the numpad. I wanted a numpad. I'm going to be using this for typing. Um, I don't need a gaming keyboard. So here's the Qnix that he was talking about. The iQnix 97 Hitchhiker gaming keyboard, 96% layout. This is it. Okay. The problem with this keyboard is the keys. I don't know what the keys are. I like to see what the keys are, I like the writing on the keys. I don't know what a rocket ship is. I don't know what a satellite dish is. I don't understand half this stuff on here, but there's no other options for this particular. There, there is a graffiti option, but I wanted these style of keycaps. PBT KDA profile, which means there's a curve to it. And I like the curve. One of the reasons I didn't buy this keyboard is because it was 275 bucks. And I was gonna have to swap out the keys and I was gonna have to swap out the key switches and lube it and all this other stuff. And it was gonna end up running me maybe 400 bucks. So I went ahead and bought this uh, Keychron right here, $98. And went ahead and got the wrist rest. Got some keycaps that were KDA profile or XVX, it just basically the same thing. But I wanted PBT caps, but I also wanted to be shine through so that I could see the RGB shine through. So I also didn't like this color. So I bought all three. They, this is the only, these were the only keycaps I could find that were KDA pro profile that were also PBT and had shine through. Although the shine through kind of sucks on them, probably could have gone with something different. Anyway, I got those and I got these arrow keys because they're textured and I want to be able to see where the, or feel where the, the arrows are. Um, and I went with these Duroc Silent T1 Tactile Shrimp Keyboard Switches. Um, they're extremely quiet. They have these uh, rubber deals on the, on the switches to silence them and their tactile switches is what what I wanted but there's 67 grams of um, pressure on this on the spring and I thought that was a little much so I went ahead and got me new springs these are uh, gold plated I doubt they're actually gold plated but um, they were 45 grams instead of 63 grams went ahead and got me some switch film went ahead and got me a keyboard lube kit it comes with all this stuff. It was a really nice kit. It works great. So I got all that that stuff. It ended up running me $350. You could probably spend a little less if you went with different keycaps or just like one set of keycaps instead of three. If you already have a lube kit, then you're good. If you didn't feel like uh, putting gaskets on everything or um, the switch film, then you can save a little money there. You don't need the wrist rest if you already have one. I just wanted the matching wrist rest. This is a monkey type baseline test prior to me swapping out the keycaps and switches. I swear I used to type better. I basically went ahead and built me the IQNix 97% board out of the Kcron one.
has everything that I want on there. I spent about $50 more, but I probably would have spent a lot more with those, adding those switches and the keycaps uh, that I wanted. I would have spent probably about 400 and actually probably almost $500 all together. Cause I need the, the lube kit and everything else. So it saved me about $200 roughly. And um, yeah, and it's a really nice keyboard. Here's a finished product right here. I'm gonna plug it. So. I don't know if you can hear it. Sounds really smooth compared to what what it did in the beginning. Oh, it's really, really nice premium PBT. Actually, these are some cheap PBTs, but it's the only one with shine through. Really like it a lot. We're gonna do a monkey type with it now that uh, now that it's finished to see what the improvements are. There's still a decent amount of clunk to the space bar, but overall it sounds pretty quiet. That's a big improvement from what it was before. Um, just by changing out the switches and the keycaps, it changed the entire keyboard. Anyway, so the RGB doesn't shine through as well after you swap out the, the keycaps. Um, yeah, I do like the keycaps. They look nice, but I did have to mix and match them between the sets. Uh, some of the whites that came with the in the box on some of the sets, even though it was the same brand, um, had better shine through than others, but I didn't have enough to do the whole thing with the better shine through. So I had to go with the least good shine through. It has like a haze on the letters. Um, I don't, I, I like the profile. I don't really like the keycaps as much. You could go with probably different keycaps. If you can find some, if you want that profile, just like the iQnix has, then you can go with other options that just aren't shine through, that aren't gonna have RGB on them. And you can go with a different Keychron board as long as it's hot swappable. You need to have hot swappable switches. But I like this layout, it's compact, it still has the numpad. Um, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.